In this video, I'm gonna help you decide which software you should use to edit your sports videos. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorrells. I am a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports work, specifically creating basketball videos. And today we're going to be going through video editing software for sports videos. I'm going to tell you all the options that you have available to you, or at least the most popular ones. We'll go through the pros and cons of each of these options. Then I'm gonna tell you what software I use to edit my videos. And by the end of this video, you should have a pretty good idea of all the softwares that are available to you. And you'll be able to make a decision on your own for what software you wanna to use to edit your videos. So the first software that I wanna talk about is Adobe Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is great because it's widely accepted as an industry standard. Most times when I'm asked to do professional work, I'm asked to do it in Premiere Pro. Also, Premiere Pro, because it's so widely adopted, has a lot of resources available for self-education. You can very easily go online and search up Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials, like the ones that I make on this channel, and learn how to edit in the program on your own without any formal education. It's pretty straightforward to find this type of information. Some of the cons with Premiere Pro or that it's very expensive. Well, okay, not maybe not very expensive, but Premiere Pro is more expensive than some other options out there. And the only way that you can buy it is with your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, which means you have to pay every single month to keep Premiere Pro. There's no option to just pay a one-time flat fee and get the program for life. Also, some of the updates can be kind of buggy. Personally, I use Premiere Pro, but I will never update right away to the newest version of Premiere. Whenever an update is released, I always wait. I look at reviews and then after the bugs have been resolved in the update, then I move on to the next version. Finally, one pro that I forgot to mention is that Adobe Premiere Pro very easily connects to other Adobe applications like Photoshop, After Effects, and Audition amongst other programs. And being able to easily interconnect all of these programs that do different tasks makes it really easy to achieve your goal with your video very quickly. And you have a multitude of tools at your disposal for one price that you can use to do this. The next software that I wanna talk about is DaVinci Resolve. And I think DaVinci Resolve can be a great option for someone who's just starting in sports videos mostly because it is a comprehensive editor that is free. Yeah, free. So DaVinci Resolve actually has two options. There's a free option and there's also a premium option that costs $400, I believe it is, for a one-time fee. But the free option has pretty much all of the features that you're going to need to get started making sports videos. So if you're just getting started editing and you don't wanna to commit to the full price of Adobe Creative Cloud, for example, then just downloading DaVinci Resolve and learning how to edit on a platform that's free without needing to commit to that monthly subscription can be a really good alternative to the more popular Premiere Pro. Additionally, DaVinci Resolve is the industry standard for color grading. Colorists use DaVinci Resolve every single day. So even if you are learning how to edit in DaVinci Resolve and it might not be the standard across the board for editing, you are learning something that is a standard in one part of the industry. And this inherently makes you more hireable than if you were to learn an editor that isn't really used by anyone anymore per se. Also, DaVinci Resolve has audio tools built in. They have a VFX compositor built in. It's really an all-in-one stop. You might still need a bounce to After Effects if you wanna do some more complicated stuff every once in a while, but it has a lot of tools at your disposal in one program. So instead of going back and forth between different programs like Premiere Pro to Photoshop to After Effects, you can kind of stay in DaVinci Resolve and do a lot of what you want there. So it's a really great tool to have in your arsenal. Some of the cons for DaVinci Resolve, like I said, it is not the industry standard for video editing. I've never had anyone ask me to fully edit a video in DaVinci Resolve or work with another editor who is editing in Resolve. This just isn't something that happens. So you might need to learn another editor eventually if you get put into an organization where everybody edits on a different software. And also this isn't really a con, but DaVinci Resolve is a node-based editor. So when you're coloring your footage, you need to use nodes. This isn't necessarily a bad thing just for me who comes from Adobe Premiere Pro where we use keyframes and there's no nodes at all. This is just a different mindset shift. And if you're just getting started editing, that's not really a problem. But if you're used to editing a certain way and then you're gonna to switch to a node-based editor, it's gonna take a little bit of adjustment. Next, I wanna talk about Final Cut. One of the biggest pros of Final Cut is that it integrates seamlessly into an Apple ecosystem. Because Final Cut is a non-linear editor made by Apple, it works incredibly efficiently with Apple machines. It's gonna perform better than any other non-linear editor will 
on an Apple device. So if you're already integrated into that Apple ecosystem, then Final Cut Pro is gonna perform really well. Additionally, it can do pretty much anything any other standard nonlinear editor can do, so it won't necessarily restrict you. And you can get Final Cut Pro for a one-time fee, so you don't need to get locked into some subscription model like you do with Adobe Premiere. Some of the cons of a Final Cut Pro though, are the Final Cut isn't really accepted as an industry standard video editor, at least not anymore. I've never personally been asked to edit a video only in Final Cut, and I don't know any organizations that use Final Cut as a whole to edit. It's just not really something that is done anymore since people have really transitioned to the Adobe Creative Cloud for a lot of that type of stuff. And because of this, if you learn Final Cut and you are a freelancer, you might be able to get by on it. But if you want to transition to working in an organization later, there might be some requirement for you to learn a new nonlinear editor so that you can work in the workflow of that organization. And that could be a big learning curve for you, depending on how savvy you are and how good you are at independent learning. So that's something to keep in mind if you decide you want to go the Final Cut route. But hey, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, Final Cut could be a pretty good option for you. Finally, I should just mention, there's another software called Avid that exists. Avid is mostly used by larger corporations and the benefit to Avid is that it makes it very easy to work in a team and pass projects around from person to person. The interface now is very similar to what Premiere Pro looks like. So if you learn Premiere Pro, making the jump to Avid shouldn't be too, too difficult. I've played around in it a little bit, though it's not something that I really use much because I don't work in a setting where I have a whole bunch of editors working on a single project and we need to pass files around. This is not really the type of work that I do, but in some bigger organizations, everyone will edit strictly on Avid. A lot of movies in Hollywood are edited on Avid and you should know that Avid exists. And if you ever feel like learning a new nonlinear editor or you have aspirations to work on a big editing team in Hollywood or something, then downloading Avid and trying to learn that could be a good option for you as well. As I already mentioned, I use Adobe Premiere Pro to make all of my videos and I do Adobe Premiere Pro Effect tutorials on this channel. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which nonlinear editor you decide. So what I can recommend to you is learn the editor that best fits your specific needs. You now have some information about all of the softwares that are available to you, or at least the main ones. So pick one and focus on getting as good in that software as you possibly can. As long as you can tell the story that you want to tell at the end of the day, you should be fine and you should be able to create some pretty cool sports content. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If you found this video helpful, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorials like this one on a regular basis, many of them focused on sports videography, and I would love to have you around for that. And let me know in the comments which nonlinear editor you use to make your videos. I would love to have a discussion with you down there. Anyways, until next time, peace.